Turtles make excellent pets. There are several of them, but what is the best one for you? Today, let's break down the top five best pet turtles you can possibly own. My name's Adam, this is Floyd, you're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. This is a real turtle, by the way. You can see his little foot right here. Just sometimes turtles hide. Let's just start off right away. These are real turtles, not tortoises, although tortoises are turtles. So what I'm just trying to say is here, no tortoises, just turtles. And number five, best turtle you can keep, yellow belly sliders. Sliding in at number five, that was terrible. Never do that again. Yellow belly sliders. Now I could have easily put basically any slider here. A red ear slider would fit as well, but they are illegal in a lot of places in North America, which is where they're from, but they are invasive basically everywhere. Yellow belly sliders, kind of too, but they are less well known. They're uh, just as available in my opinion. They're very available, but they're not going to be a problem and they're not kind of like frowned upon. And you're not seeing places sell them super irresponsibly at like $6 a pop. I was in a pet store earlier today. I just needed to grab some driftwood and stuff and they're $70 here. That's the right way to go. Good job, Big Al's. But regardless, yellow belly sliders, the reason I pick them is because they are a bigger species of turtle, but some people like that. Oftentimes, the smaller the turtle, the better for most people because water parameters can be difficult to deal with and turtles create a lot of waste, especially yellow belly sliders, but I just think that if you want a big turtle, this is probably one of the easier ones to find and the easier ones to maintain. The diet is easy, they're very cold tolerant, the water doesn't have to be super warm. I mean, if you're comparing it to other turtles that are going to get up to around 11 inches, something like maybe an African side neck, I personally think that a yellow belly slider is a lot easier to deal with just because of the temperature and also maybe even the diet to a certain extent. And when I say bigger, I don't mean huge. They're gonna get like, Females do get bigger than males, and they might get to around 12 inches, maybe a foot, maybe 13, but males are probably gonna top out around five or six, maybe seven. So they're gonna be quite a bit smaller, and the smaller the turtle, the smaller the tank you can get away with. I'm not saying go bare minimum at all. Always get as big of an enclosure as you could possibly get for your animal. Bigger is almost always better, especially when it comes to water parameters because a yellow belly slider is gonna produce a lot of waste. And the more water there is available, the less soil the water will appear. And uh, if you're gonna have a larger pump to pump a larger volume of water, the water is gonna be able to be much cleaner just because like one poop particle in 50 gallons of water is less of an issue than one particle in 120 gallons of water. A kind of large, very hardy, easy to care for, and absolutely fantastic and awesome to look at species that have a yellow belly. I can't, it won't stand my shoulder like a bearded dragon. Number four, Diamondback Terrapin. Now I know that I might be pronouncing this wrong, Tarapin, Terrapin, there's a bunch of different, anyway, what's really cool is the name in Algonquin actually means tiny turtle. So this is a little bit more difficult than most of the turtles on the list, just simply because they live in brackish water. So a little bit more difficult, this is a smaller turtle than the yellow belly slider. You're gonna find them basically everywhere in North America on the Eastern seaboard. But I think that they actually look very unique. Maybe not so much their shell, but just their neck, the, the pattern, the color. I think that they look a little bit more unique than most turtles that you can find. And that with the size, I think makes them very cool and very unique in why they're on the list. The brackish water thing, it's kind of like uh, it's smaller, so it's easier to care for than a larger turtle in a lot of ways, but the brackish water kind of like bumps the skill level needed uh, back up. So it's really kind of like tit for tat. Do you just want maybe a smaller enclosure that has brackish water or a larger enclosure? It just depends. But I just think because of their behavior, they swim a lot, they're active. I just find them very unique and interesting to watch. When I first started watching videos about turtles on the internet, when I was looking at turtles forever ago, I would always look at these diamondback terrapins because they just looked so different. And at five to eight inches, I mean, I talked about how they were small. It just, it seems like that is kind of like the perfect size. If you want an aquarium, that's not gonna take up like an entire wall in your house. 
So if you're looking for something a little bit smaller that is very beautiful and has a little bit of a different difficulty level because of the brackish water, I think these guys are definitely for you. Number three, and the smallest on the list, common musk turtles, or sometimes called stink pots. And the reason they're called stink pots is just simply because they're stinky. They have these glands on their carapace and the corners of the carapace where they can emit like a foul odor. It's like an orange goo almost. So that's why they're called stink pots. And they do this for the same reason that a lot of snakes will musk, uh, just because they feel threatened or they feel like they need to deter a predator from getting at them. So if you handle them often, you'll have less of this happen to you, um, but it could definitely happen to you. Now there's a give and take here as well. They're not quite as beautiful as some of the other species of turtles on the list, but they are small, very small. We're talking three to five inches, usually four to four and a half inches as an average, but they do kind of like five or three on either side sometimes, which means that you can keep several of them together in a tank that might only be big enough for one yellow belly slider. Or if you just want one of them, then you can keep them in a smaller enclosure. Some people keep them as small as a 40, I would say 75 would probably be better. For example, this isn't a care guide, do your own research. But if you wanna see care guides about any of these, drop a comment in the description and hit like, and I'd be happy to make them for you. So they're small, but they are drab looking, and these guys are feisty. I would definitely call musk turtles feisty, just simply because they want to bite you, basically always, if you handle them and they're not super socialized. Now you're not gonna be handling turtles a lot anyway, not the same way you'd handle a leopard gecko or a bearded dragon or something like that, but they can bite and musk on you and yeah. But the same way I'm grabbing a Floyd here, just the back, just make sure you grab at the back of the shell. They do have very uh, flexible necks and very sharp, like a beaky jaw thing that if they do get you, you'll know about it. Uh, but they're not dangerous. This is the kind of thing that I think most of us really like about turtles is they're cute and it kind of looks like I'm just holding a shell, but I'm just gonna look at his foot. It's cute foot. As far as beginners go, this is one of the best just because of the size. So you don't need a lot of water. And I know some people will argue that the more water, the easier it is to keep clean. Maybe, but the bigger the water receptacle, the more water you have to deal with. And for some people, they just don't want to. And some people, if you're just getting your feet wet and getting into turtles, you don't want a huge enclosure. For example, for my yellow belly slider, he's gonna have either a stock tank or a big 120, 150 gallon aquarium. And that's gonna take up an entire wall in my living room, basically, right? A six foot thing. So if you want something a little bit smaller, then, I mean, a musk turtle might be right for you. Number two, and in my opinion, the cutest on the list, Mississippi map turtles. Now they're called map turtles because the lines on them kind of looks like, well, a map basically. These guys are absolutely amazing. They are found around Mississippi. They like that part of the, the US. So it makes sense. Their name is like very intuitive of why they're called the Mississippi map turtle. I like them because I think they have the cutest faces. This is Mappy. This is, I've got two turtles, they live together. And Mappy is definitely the most active and interesting to watch. He's almost always in the water. It's very rare you see him out of the water at all. Although of course, always give them a place to go so that they can be dry. If you don't, turtles will get scale rot most of the time. And he is, uh, he's a little bit nippy too. He'll try to bite you if he can, but I absolutely love this guy. He's one of my favorites in my entire reptile collection just because it's fun to watch. He swims and swims and swims and just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. It's just really fun. He's not the best at, at eating just because like he has to like take three or four stabs at the pellet or mealworm or whatever it is that I feed him. But uh, it, I mean, he's pretty cute. If you want a cute turtle, Mississippi map turtles might be for you, especially the males, because the males might top out at five inches, something like that. Females are gonna get a little bit bigger, but they're still not a huge turtle. And Mappy is a boy, so he is basically full grown. He's at least 25 years old, maybe older. I just know 25 years of his history, and him and Buggy have lived together for their entire lives, so. It's pretty cool. I can't say for sure if this is a map turtle thing, but at least with Mappy, he does get a little bit of algae growth on him. It's been a little bit easier to maintain since we've really upped the filter system. Our filter system is larger than it needs to be for the amount of water that we're using, and it has a UVB type of filtration system attached to it, so it's been better. But even so, sometimes with mad turtles, you have to take them out and just scrub them with a toothbrush to get the algae off of their shell. It's not dangerous or anything, it's just it looks kind of weird and 
ugly. So that's just something that you might want to consider. But honestly, these are my, of the aquatic turtles, these are my favorites. All right, number one best turtle that there is, in my opinion, to me, box turtles. He is super shy. This is Floyd. He is a three-toed box turtle and three toads and Easterns. They're very similar. I would say those are the most common by far. And they just like a high humidity level. The temperature isn't super crazy, but they're very easy because they are terrestrial. So if you find one, if you live in a place in the US where you see box turtles, don't put it in the water. They're not made for the water. Their feet are made for the land. Tickle, tickle, tickle. And because there is no water parameters to deal with besides their shallow water bowl, which you'll give them to drink out of and maybe soak in if they want to, but which is kind of rare, you don't have to worry about water, which is nice. It's easy. You have to worry about a substrate, which is much more common in terms of reptile keeping. Most reptiles that we keep, and especially that we talk about on this channel, we're talking about substrate. For this guy, I'm just using like a coconut core, coconut husk type of substrate. It holds humidity well, but doesn't get moldy. Just very simple. This is definitely one that I'll do a care guide on, just because I noticed there's not a ton on YouTube for you to watch. But so long as they get the heat, humidity, and UVB that they need, then it's really simple because their diet is basically anything. Uh, as babies, they're gonna eat more of our carnivorous diet. As adults, they'll eat more plant matter, flowers, things like that kind of like a bearded dragon in terms of how it switches like that, but they'll be, eat basically anything. In the wild, you'll see them eat things like even amphibians or uh, like carrion or uh, eggs, things like that. They'll eat basically anything. If you're eating dead animals, you'll eat basically anything. Something to consider with box turtles is they live forever. They live, this is a 13 year old box turtle and he might not even be done growing yet. Sometimes they'll grow like to 20 years old. This guy is probably pretty close to top out. So not huge, but they are terrestrial species that do need some room. I would definitely recommend getting as big of an enclosure as you can. And if you live in a place where it's nice outside during the summer, and I, like by nice, I mean, would be close to the parameters that they need, then I would keep them outside for the summer. This guy here will definitely live outside in the summer. I might even try to split where the tortoises are gonna go. I've got some cherry heads that are gonna live outside too, and maybe they'll kinda like live next to each other and be neighbors. Whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or expert level reptile keeper, I think that any of these turtles would be for you if you're looking for a turtle that isn't crazy difficult to keep and very enjoyable as well. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Do you like this list? Should I have added something else, something different? What do you have for a turtle and how do you enjoy it? A big thank you to the Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much. We're gonna get to the patron of the week in just a second, but if you'd like discounts on the merch, see these videos extra early, if you wanna know about animals like Floyd months in advance, I got him like before Christmas and put him on uh, Patreon. You can join for as little as $1 a month. And this week's patron of the month, Ethan Faulkner. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate it. Coming up on your one year and almost ready to get your free shirt. That's one of the perks, by the way, the $15 uh, level is you get a free shirt once a year. And uh, did I plug absolutely everything? Uh, hit subscribe. Oh, you can feed these guys black soldier fly larvae. Discount code WWR and link below. Okay, see you on Thursday.